All right, let's talk about the laws of conservation. It's kind of an easy topic, so let's get to it. All right, here are standards, pause it, peruse it. All right, the law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, can change form, but the total amount of energy remains the same. So <clears throat> I can roll a bowling ball down and hit the pins. The energy is transferred from the ball to the pins, but nothing is lost. So the gasoline in a car converts chemical energy to mechanical energy to move the car, also electrical to run things inside the car, also light energy to turn on the headlights, lots of things. A light bulb is powered by electrical energy. It converts it to electromagnetic energy or light radiant energy, but also some light bulbs produce heat. That's kind of a not useful, but still happens as a conversion, okay? Lots of energy conversions happening all the time. Here's an example of an energy conversion. The energy is not lost. The energy is not gained. It just changes form. It's transferred. Okay, the law of conservation of mass. Not surprising, it states that mass cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So it's sometimes called the law of conservation of mass or the law of conservation of matter. But either way, matter, mass, atoms can't be created or destroyed. They can just be rearranged. So in a chemical reaction, as what is shown here, the mass that you have in the beginning is going to be the mass you have at the end. Notice, do you see this right here? This is critical. See this? That's a stopper. So that means this is a closed system. So in a closed system, the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the product. What if this stopper weren't here? What if this stopper was gone and I just had a flask that was open? That meant anything that was converted into a gas could escape. So then it might appear that the mass changed, but all I did was let the gas get away. So you can see here in a closed system, starting mass is equal to the ending mass. Even though what, I, what was produced was a gas, because it is a closed system, I can see that the mass that I start with is the mass that I end with. All right, and then we have the law of conservation of charge. And it states that charge can move from one object to another, but it can't again be created or destroyed. This is gonna become really important when we do nuclear chemistry, but I wanna to touch on it now because we're talking about all the laws. So here's an example. So again, you can see charges moving around Okay, but the total charge stays the same. So if the total mass of reactants is 65.4 grams, what is the total mass of the products? 65.4 grams, right? Law of conservation of mass. So during all chemical reactions, charge, mass, and energy are conserved. Given this balanced equation, if I have 46 grams of Na, so let's see here in my formula right here, I have 46 grams of Na reacting completely, all right, and 71 grams of Cl2, what is the total amount of NaCl produced? Well, it's just math. Law of conservation of mass says the mass I started with has to be equal to the mass I end with. So if I start with this, I add those together, that has to be the mass I end with too. Which equation represents a conservation of atoms? So that means I have to have the same number on both sides. So I can see here I have 2Fe and 2Fe. Perfect. This is 3 times 2, that's 6 but I only have three, so that's wrong. Two here, two here, good. Two times two is four. Oh, but I have three over there. 
So two, this is four, this is two times two, that's four. Two times two is four, but two times 30 is six. So this one better work. I don't know why I skipped it. Four, two times two is four. Three times two is six, and two times three is six. Oh, there we go. There's the right answer. All right, so that's the law of conservation. Hope you learned something new today.